Today I'm going to be showing you guys the up-to-date best settings for Warzone Season 2 to get maximum FPS, lowest input latency, and improved visibility inside of your game. We are going to be focusing on just the in-game settings today. Things like config files and Windows settings, that hasn't changed since the last update. So if you want info on that after we finish this video, go back to my Warzone Season 1.5, Season 1 Reloaded settings, which I'll have in the description below. Before we continue, many of you will probably own one of these. A bulky wallet that doesn't fit in your pocket and has cards overflowing out of it. Well, I no longer have that problem ever since the guys from x sent me out their Parliament wallet and aluminium card holder. Both of these wallets are super sleek and slim and come with RFID protection. The best feature though has to be the quick card access. This allows you to grab any and all of your cards as quick as possible at just the click of a button. The Parliament wallet feels great. It's made of certified premium leather and the aluminium card holder is perfectly slim and stylish. Inside the back plate, I've got the x wallet tracker, which is really really sold this product to me. It pairs with your phone, so you can always find your wallet from your phone and the other way around. These are just two of the amazing products that Exta has to offer, and they make a perfect gift for a friend or a loved one. There's actually a Valentine's Day sale on right now. Head to my link in the description below. There's also a code you can use for 5% off on top of any sale that's happening at the time at checkout on any product go check it out. So beginning as usual in the display menu. Display mode, you ideally want to be putting to full screen exclusive. Full screen borderless still does perform well on most systems, especially if you're someone who does do a lot of multitasking, needs to alt tab a lot due to whatever you're doing. However, if you're focused on competitive gameplay, full screen exclusive will give you the lowest input latency, the best response times on all of your peripherals. So I do recommend it. Below that, display monitor and adapter. Just make sure these are both set to the correct monitor and GPU in your system. Below that, we've got screen refresh rate. You want to make sure that this is set to the number that is nearest to your refresh rate of your primary monitor that you're playing on. I have a 240 hertz monitor, so 239.97 is the nearest to me. Why these numbers don't round and actually give the correct numbers, I do not know, but just, tip, just pick the nearest one. You've then got your display resolution, which you should be able to leave to automatic and it will select your native one for you. And aspect ratio, same thing goes, set this to automatic. The only reason to change this is if you want to try and force some sort of stretched resolution or black bars resolution, which I wouldn't really recommend in Warzone. You don't really gain an advantage from doing that. Next, you've got your restart shaders preloading option. This is only needing to be ran if you are running into any weird stuff or problems in game, this can be a good way of fixing it. You'll just click this button, it will restart the shaders optimization in the top left hand corner, and it can fix a lot of problems. Inside of there, show more, you've just got some info on what the whole shader preloading stuff is, but we don't need to know about that right now. Then we've got display gamma, which you need to make sure is set to 2.2 if you're playing on a monitor, and 2.4 if you're playing on a TV. This is just gonna give you the best overall look of colors and lighting and gamma across the scene at any point in the game. Then we've got bright which you can set in here. It gives you a guide to try and follow. However, I would recommend that you go against that guide and actually bump your brightness about five to 10 above what the guide seems to give you. So for me, if I go for the default 50, I get basically the guide exactly set where this is barely visible, this is not, and this is easily visible. However, as I said, you want to put it up by five. It's just going to alleviate some of the problems with visibility in some of the darker areas of the map. This was resolved quite heavily in the previous season update. However, I still would recommend recommend that you bump that brightness. Constrain mouse to game window will only be available if your display mode was set to borderless. Obviously, I didn't recommend doing that, but if you did, then you'll have this option and enabling it means that your mouse will stay on your screen at all times. So I would recommend you turn that on for full screen borderless. Then Nvidia Reflex Low Latency, very important that you do not have this at off, but whether you put it on on or on plus boost is explained over here. Essentially, on plus boost is specifically for CPU bound systems. So these are any systems where your CPU is the bottleneck, systems where you've got a really powerful GPU, but your CPU is sort of lacking behind, which a lot of people who have budget systems for gaming will have. They'll have an old CPU uh, that's just good enough and a really good GPU. If you're in that situation, go for on plus boost. However, if you're in a situation more like myself where your CPU and your GPU are on par with each other, or maybe you're in a GPU bound case where you've got an older GPU and maybe a newer CPU, then on is better. So pick your poison, see which one works better for you. If you follow my guidance there, you should get the best latency. Eco mode preset, make sure this is set to custom. This is essentially just gonna give you full manual control on all power saving features. So it's not gonna try and override anything and make the game basically run worse to save power. Then V 
Resync, gameplay, and menus, both of these need to be off. They add a lot of input latency, even though they do help with screen tearing if you're playing on lower refresh rate monitors. I would highly recommend against it if you want a competitive uh, chance at playing this game. The input latency is really, really bad. For custom frame rate limit, make sure this is set to custom, then go to show more. Gameplay custom frame rate limit, you can jack that all the way up to full. We do not want to be losing any frames or limiting ourselves inside of the game. However, the menu custom frame rate limit, we can bring that down. I put it at the refresh rate of my monitor. If I wasn't to do this and I was to let this go to 300, then my menu would probably run near 300 FPS, which I really don't need it to be doing. That's going to be just really stressing my system at a time when I really don't need it to be doing so. And then below that, you've got the out of focus custom frame rate limit, which is basically what frame rate does the game run out when you've alt tabbed and you're doing something over in your second screen. For that, I've brought it all the way down to the lowest option of just five. That way, when I alt tab and I'm doing something over here, I'm on Twitter or I'm on a loadout website trying to find a loadout or a YouTube video or something, it's not going to be lagging all over here because my game is taking up all of my resource. My game is going to give the resource over here when I need it. This overall setup of frame rate limits is very, very important and most people don't do it. Menu render resolution is a newer option that they've added and I would recommend that you just run this at maximal. Uh, this is only going to have an effect in the menu and it just makes it so that when you're looking through things like blueprints and loadouts and operators, you're not getting a lower resolution. You're, you're really not gaining anything from saving some power power when you're in the menus. It's when you're in game that you'd mainly want to save power. So it's just a bit of a weird setting. Don't really understand why you'd want to change this. Put this to maximal. Pause game rendering is another new setting where if you turn this on, it will basically just put a black screen on your game anytime you press the pause menu. So escape on the keyboard or when you alt tab out the game. I have yet to test this and see how it really works, but I'm probably not going to bother with it. Just having my custom frame rate limit as I've set here is good enough for limited resource when I'm alt tabbing and I wouldn't want to make my screen go black whilst I'm paused because if I'm paused I'm doing something and I sort of need to see if something, someone in the background is going to come kill me so I don't think it's a good option. Focus mode leave this to zero we don't need this black overlay being produced it says it can help for multi-monitor setup but just leave it at zero and then high dynamic range I would recommend most people would leave this off the only people who should be turning this on and playing around with it should be those who have very good HDR monitors or TV that they can sit there and they can dial it in and they can look at guides online. I'm not the person to give you all that information. If you don't know what you're doing with it, just leave it off. Moving on to quality, graphic preset. You can set this to whatever you want because when we change stuff down here, it will automatically change to custom. Render resolution, make sure that this is just set to 100 or 100%. 100 we do not want to be downscaling our render resolution here. We have upscaling for that if we need to gain FPS later on. Same thing goes for dynamic resolution. We just don't need to use this when upscaling is a thing that we can use so make sure this is off too and then upscaling slash sharpening you've basically got two main options if you want your game to look sharper better and you've got a decent enough system where using all of my settings you're getting good fps then you should be using fidelity fx cas sharpening you can then click show more and you can turn this to i'd recommend a minimum of 80 if you're playing on 1080p you might want to turn this all the way up to 100 but on 1440p for me i just find that i don't really need that much sharpness. If, however, you are looking to get a bit more FPS, maybe your system is a little bit behind, this game does use a lot of system resource, then you can use AMD FSR 3.0 or NVIDIA DLSS if you have those options. For AMD FSR 3.0, make sure that frame generation is not on. Very, very important thing. Lots of people who are basically faking benchmarks by using this. You can see what this does is it increases frame rate by creating additional frames that basically uses AI to produce them. It is, it's fake. It just adds a lot of input latency and bumps your FPS number without actually giving you the benefits of improved FPS for a competitive shooter. Do not use it. For the AMD FSR preset though, you can play around between quality and native and see which looks best and performs best for you. Both of these should give you a nice little bit of performance gain uh, with the image quality still looking pretty good. If you have access to DLSS, if you have access to DLSS with an Nvidia card, you can also try out this instead. For this, you want to make sure you've set this all the way up to quality and DLSS sharpness to 100. Me, however, I've got a solid PC, so I am still running Fidelity FX Gas with strength 80. Path tracing or path reconstruction. A lot of you guys won't have access to this. This is pretty much only available for 40 series NVIDIA cards, but you 
doesn't matter because you don't want to use it. This is like a campaign only kind of thing. It's an absolute killer on your system. So make sure this is off. VRAM scale target. Do not set this to 90 like people will try and make you believe. You need to set this between 60 and 70. One of these two options should give you the overall best performance when it comes to uh, hitching or stuttering. It even says it over here. It says when experiencing hitches, consider closing all other applications or lowering this settings target. If you set this too high, your game will stutter. So turn this down until it feels good for you around 60 or 70. Variable rate shading is an amazing setting that you need to have on. It will make sure that everything in the center focus bit of your screen is rendered in fully 100%, but it will drop some of the rendering of stuff that's out of your kind of focus that you, you honestly won't notice, but you will gain very nice amounts of performance by keeping it on. And then down here, we've got NVIDIA DLSS frame generation. It's the same thing as the AMD one above. Do not use it. Now let's blast through the remaining options in the list here. So we've got texture resolution. You want to set this to low rather than very low. Very low just looks awful. Going up to low really increases the visual fidelity for a very, very small FPS cost. If you go higher than low, you don't really gain any visual fidelity at all, but you will keep losing FPS. So low is a really good balanced option. Texture filter anisotropic just has no effect on FPS whatsoever on any modern game and gives you a nice boost in visual clarity. So turn this up to high. Depth of field, you want to make sure is off because otherwise you're going to get blurred edges of your screen while you're ADSing. Not going to be very handy if an enemy walks in there, is it? So make sure that's off. Detail quality level, we can leave too low. We will get some weird looking bushes and shrubs and greenery around, but you will save a little bit for performance and we don't really care about this anyway. Particle resolution, make sure that this is on the lowest setting, very low. Uh, this does two things. It will actually improve your FPS dramatically because all of these explosions and flares and all the stuff going off does have a real impact, but it will also improve visual fidelity because you can see over here a little bit easier through any explosions. This thermite going off, I much prefer this one off on the left. It doesn't look as real, but I'll be able to see a little bit better behind it while it's happening. Bullet impacts, I like to leave them on. Completely personal preference though, it has no effect on FPS. I think they're good because you can test recoil plots inside of the firing range or inside of game when you pick up a gun and you don't really know how it's gonna fire, which is really handy. Persistent effects, however, these are basically like bullet impacts, but they are for explosions. So when an explosion goes off, does it leave a black mark on the floor? I don't like that, so I'd recommend that you leave that off. Then shader quality. This is a big FPS killer. It does also make your game look very nice when you turn it up but we're gonna have to leave it on low for those nice FPS gains. On-demand texture streaming, make sure that this is set to off so that we are not downloading textures from the internet while we're playing. Just why would you ever wanna do that? Just make sure that's off. And then the last one in this little section is local texture streaming quality, which you also wanna make sure is on low. It just doesn't do a huge amount in terms of visual fidelity, and it does gain you a nice little bit of FPS. For shadow and lighting, shadow quality is very much like texture quality from earlier. We're not gonna put it to the lowest one because the shadows look like ass. We're gonna turn it up by one, which is gonna give you much nicer, crisper looking shadows for a very, very small performance loss, but it's definitely worth it. Screen space shadows, and ambient occlusion are basically two different kinds of shadows that we don't want. Uh, screen space shadows are shadows on your character, on your gun as you're moving around, just unnecessary. And the same thing goes for ambient occlusion. It's gonna make these areas where objects are meeting and getting close, it's gonna make them just a little bit brighter, which is actually gonna be handy for overall visibility in game. Then screen space reflections, make sure that these are off. It's gonna get rid of those nice reflections, I know, but there's no competitive advantage to be gained from them anyway, so we can just turn them off for a bit of a performance gain. And then static reflection quality, this goes hand in hand with the previous one. We're just gonna turn it right the way down. And then for environment tessellation, this just basically makes a lot of these areas of the ground and certain bits of the map look a little bit more realistic, but we don't really care about it, so we're gonna keep it off. Volumetric quality, it helps out with making these sun rays look really bright and in your face. Very nice for a cinematic look, but not good for a competitive advantage and absolutely 
kills your performance. So make sure that this is turned all the way down. And then these last three settings here, deferred physics, weather grid volumes, and water quality, all of these we want to turn to off. This is basically just going to limit all of the resources that are being put into things like weather, uh, things like water on the map, how the waves look and things like that. Once again, things we do not care about, so we need to make sure they're off. And then finally, for the view tab, field of view. If you're on mouse and keyboard, I would just recommend you keep this at 120 because having the maximum amount of field of view is always going to be a good competitive advantage. You're just going to be able to see if an enemy comes in from your peripherals far quicker than if you're on something like even 100, where you've just lost so much of that potential information. However, if you're playing on a controller, you can actually get a little bit of an advantage from dropping this down to something like 110, purely because it seems like it basically increases the size of any player models on your screen which therefore allows aim assist to kick in that little bit stronger uh, on that larger target if you don't believe me uh, there's plenty of videos out there explaining this exact thing try it out you'll probably find that you land more of your shots but i am a filthy mouse and keyboard player so i'm gonna stick with 120 ads field of view make sure this this is on affected if you set this to independent you're gonna zoom in really far when you ads basically the fov we set up here is not gonna have any effect we want that to have an effect so that when we're shooting down our site number one we get less visual recoil because we're not so zoomed in but also we still maintain a lot of information in our peripherals as we're firing weapon field of view is kind of personal preference but i like wide it just brings my gun a little bit further away from a character makes me feel a lot less claustrophobic while I'm playing but it's honestly personal preference third person field of view we haven't had third person still since the release of this game so it doesn't do anything so um but I'd turn it up all the way just because when we do get it I want the max and vehicle field of view definitely put this on wide that way when we get in a vehicle we once again get as much information around us as possible and we're not zoomed in really far to the car for the camera section Last few things in here. World motion blur and weapon motion blur. Both of these need to be off. We hate motion blur. It will make it very, very hard to play the game. Film, film grain is the same thing. We need to make sure that this is set to zero so that we're not applying a cinematic filter over our game. First and third person camera movements. Turn them both down to the lowest options. That way we'll get as little screen shake as possible in game. Third person ADS transition, doesn't matter set it to whatever you want spectator camera make sure that this is set to game perspective this way if you die and then you jump into one of your friends or teammates perspectives you're not going to be on that weird head camera on the side you're going to be able to be in exactly their game perspective as if you were playing as them if you understand what I mean. This helmet camera sucks. I would never use it. And then the last one here, inverted flashbang. A little bit of a fun option here. If you turn this on, it's going to make it so flashbangs, instead of being very, very white and bright, which uh, uh, might cause headaches or might just cause your eyes to go a bit glary when you get flashbanged in game, uh, it's going to make them actually make your screen go black. I personally keep this off because if my screen suddenly went black and I was playing on PC, I would assume that my game had crashed, especially with how much this game crashes. Um, but it's a bit of personal preference. I would recommend you try it out and see if you like it first uh, before assuming that you don't, uh, but I'm going to keep it off. As I mentioned at the start of the video, all of the details are regarding the config files and how you set them up for best FPS, as well as window settings, are all covered in my season one reloaded video, which I'm just going to link over here. So I'd recommend you go and watch that next because nothing has changed for those parts since then.